Good morning. So, uh, Snippet Pixie next. Uh, I was going around in circles trying to get page up, page down, working well on a custom uh, list component in Svelte. Um, and so I ended up um, yesterday morning, I recorded a session and I just, I really literally just changed it up, went around in circles, changed back to basically what I had. Um, uh, and I've scrapped the video because it, it went nowhere. Um, it was just a waste of time, really. Um, but last night I had another crack at it, did some more research. Um, and I think I've got a solution. Um, so uh, I thought we might investigate that and hopefully if it's looking okay after a quick test, I'll commit that. Um, and there's a couple of, I think there's a couple of little tweaks I can make as well. Um, so that'd be nice. So, um, I'll give it a quick demo, uh, so you can see what I'm actually talking about. Um, and then, um, I'll show you what I did to get this working. Uh, so we'll just type that. So it's the list, um, and if I tab into the list and I hit page down, it now works as I expect. So what I hope to happen here is that if I hit page down, that this one here, the zero BLCU, um, gets um, swung up to the top. And it does. And the same for the CPU now, and EMR, journal, MDB, OS here, and all that kind of stuff. And then I get all the way down to the bottom. Um, and then this is where it's just slightly, I might tweak it a little bit. But um, if I go back up, it'll do the right thing as such. Um, so if I go all the way down until we get to here, um, it would have been nice if it says, oh, I'm at the bottom. Um, and it either kind of reselects the one at the top or just goes straight to the bottom because it's the whole page. I think to the bottom. Uh, you don't need to then do that. Um, but yeah, so it's working there. And of course, it's working on the way up as well. So this week should now go to the bottom. And we can see the next page as such. And I like to have the one that's last visible or mostly visible, um, be the one that you kind of rest on um, as you go up and down so that you know that you're, you're seeing the next page um, and you've got a reference from the previous page in it. So Snippy Pixie, uh, that one, OSES, M3U, and so it's working. Um, it's doing what I expect, apart from maybe that last, hey, you're already in, inside the page you should show the first um, now previously what was happening was when i did a page down uh, from the top it would select something like that one there number eight in this list um, and it was swing that up to the top and the problem was all down to i was trying to calculate the client uh, view um, height uh, which is the actual list viewport as such. Um, I was using that um, as well as the scroll of the main list of things there at top and then calculating and then basically going through and finding the one which was offset enough to be at the bottom and then scrolling it up. Um, and the calculations are all wrong there. Um, it seems to be there's a real mismatch between um, some rounding and uh, decimal going on there. And it's very hard to predict what's going to happen because you don't have control over the, some of that rounding. The I think it was the, the client height and the height of each item um, using the offset height um, is all is rounded. You have no choice so if, if you have slightly different heights it could round up it could round down all that kind of stuff but then the scroll position of the entire list is decimal so there's a mismatch there between 
what the heights seem to think they are and where they are positioned. I guess it just this, I presume that's the bottom, but you know, it always showed a calculation in the debug that looked okay, but it didn't work. So now I've gone to a completely different mechanism. So um, I'll just quickly explain what that is, um, and then I'll have a go at fixing that last page um, and first page up um, wrinkle. So we're now using an intersection observer. Um, and what this does is um, for a particular reference, which is by default the actual document, but in this case I'm passing in a reference to the list, um, so that the, the snippets list itself. Um, you can start observing um, items that are within that component, so it's children as such. So, and then you send and you give it a threshold. So in this case, I'm saying 60%. So the threshold to me is in this case, there is an intersection by a child component of at least of 60% is inside or is out or yeah, it's basically 60% once it's 60% in or it's moving out so that it's less than 60%, it triggers this callback function. So it's basically observing that the intersection of a component inside it is coming in or going out. Um, normally you might, you might set zero. So it's like, Hey, when you can see some of it, let me know, um, you know, one pixel basically. Um, and when it leaves, you get another trigger and then you can, and that's, uh, the entries here. Um, if you set the threshold to one, you're basically saying only tell me when the component has completely entered the viewport that you're monitoring or um, has completely left and is invisible. But I'm setting it to 60%. So for me, um, that means, you know, I can see most of the text in, you know, on the line in the, in the snippet, pixie, bam, in a, in a snippet. Um, and that's enough that I would be happy to use that as like the top or the, the bottom of the page up, page down. So what happens is a callback happens when say it moves in by 60%. Um, and then I'm just going through all the entries. Um, it's, and it's, it's entries of that have just been triggered basically. So there's like a trigger event and all these things have changed one way or another. Um, well, sorry, all these observe, all these items that have been observed. Um, and so you just quickly loop through them. And then I, there's a, basically there's an in, is intersecting. So you can say, yes, it's like 60% inside. Um, in which case I'm just setting a class on, on the snippet, snippets list item to say it's a visible, is visible. Um, and if it's not intersecting, so it's gone out or it's way at the top of the list and it's not in the viewport or bottom, whatever. Um, I'm just removing that class. I did play around with attributes and I did play around with using the property and exposing it and all this kind of stuff. And it all got a bit uh, problematic. It was a lot easier just to use classes. Um, attributes and things, it was complaining about not having the attribute at certain points um, in, in the scheme of things. A class is a lot easier. It's, it's more uh, it seems to work more reliably anyway. I thought that it might be nice to potentially um, do some styling based on that in the future as well, if not just for debugging anyway. Um, so basically, uh, when the list starts up, we set up the observer, um, but it's not observing anything. Nothing has registered itself to say, hey, you know, keep tabs on me, please. Um, so what happens? for me now is that during the building of the list here, so all the items, um, for each item, I now 
passing a reference to the observer. Um, and then in here, when the component comes into being um, and has it's there and it's ready, um, if there is an observer given to the component, um, it says, hey, observe me. And then when the component is being destroyed, so if we've changed the, the snippets through search, and therefore some of these components are going to disappear because we don't need them anymore, because um, they don't match the search criteria. Um, when they get destroyed, if there's an observer, um, we say, don't observe me anymore. So that's just like a performance thing, and obviously we don't want it to be triggering um, these things. So the, the item itself says, observe, don't observe me. Um, and then that means things get a little bit simpler um, because when something is visible, um, I can just take it, check it with a little function that I created. Um, so in these things here, um, I just have a look at the class list for this um, snippet list item. Does it contain, is it visible? Is visible. Why do I keep saying is is visible? Okay, uh, and that's it. Um, so when you do a page down, um, go through the list of um, elements, the uh, list list items. In fact, um, check if they're visible. If they are, they could potentially be the last visible one. So we set this variable. If not. Um, and we already have um, selected at least one item as being visible as we're going down the list. So we've already entered the viewport as such. We can break out and focus that last item that we found and then scroll it to the top. Same for the page down. We basically go from the bottom down until we find an item that is visible. So it's already inside the list. Um, and as we're going from the top, it might be the first item in the list, but it could be like way down in the list, but it's been scrolled up to the top. So we found that as therefore the first visible, we can break out straight away without having to deal with any others, um, focus it, and then move it down to the bottom because we're paging up. So we want to see everything that was above it. Um, and that's it. And that's the way it works. Um, and it seems to be a lot easier. Um, a lot quicker, a lot more reliable, and it does exactly what I want uh, compared to when I was trying to calculate heights and clients and all that kind of stuff. So I am going to uh, commit that, I think. Um, so I th there's a couple of things I can do here to clean up. Don't believe I'm using this anymore. Let me just double check. So I can get shot of that. And I don't think I'm using offset top anymore. Yep. So I can get shot of that. You see, as I'm doing is to use it again. It says I'm not using this visible by am. That's a little bit of an issue in that. This is just not resolving it, um, but I'm obviously definitely using it here. Um, and then scroll into view, definitely I'm using. See our mount and so on as well. So I think that's OK. I should probably just give that a quick test to make sure everything's OK. And then I'm going to save it, and then I'm just going to see if I can tweak that uh, top and bottom page in up. So I killed it off, didn't I? Okay, we rebuild that. We'll just move it up here now. Keep it around. That. 
So if I type in here and page down, it's working fine. There we go. Yeah, same issue there with uh, scrolling off. Okay, and then I can page up as well. Bits our light. Yep. That's you. Yeah. Cool. Okay, that works. Oh, I should probably just double check. Uh, so home and down up. Um, control forward. Control back. Uh, what else did we have? Oh yeah, we had Shift G, G, uh, and then J. Okay. Okay. Fine. Okay, let's commit that. Intersect observer. Okay. Push it out for safety. Okay. Right, let's see if we can work out how to do that last bit. So um On the page down, what we're trying to do is get to the point where if you've paged down, so you have a page here, I think is this week, yeah. It says, okay, you're right, TPU is the last one there. So I'm going to scroll it to the top, but I can't quite get it there. So there's two ways we could do that. We could either say, okay, there's an item above that is now visible, having just done that change. Or we could say the last item is now visible. So let's just select that. I think. I think I prefer select the last. I think it makes more sense to say, okay, right, well, you're at the end now. And that saves you having to do like an, another like end or page down to get to that last one. Although it makes any difference there. Um, so yeah, so how can we do that? So we're going to get to the point where we're going to do the scroll. which is going to update the intersection observer. Yeah. <laughs> 
So, how about if we do something like if elements IDX no if elements Oh, we're not going to have IDX, are we? Okay, oh yeah, but we've got focused item. Okay. If focused item is less than Elements dot length minus one. Just do what I do. I'm just going to make sure it's in parents. And Hold on, let's just do that. We'll just have last index. Const last index equals that. So if the focused item is not the last, and Elements last index is visible. Then just set focused item again to the last index. Okay, let's try that. So down, 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 down. So this week. So TPU is going to, right, so TPFU is going to be above. So let's do this. So TPU, we should end up right at the bottom now. Ah. We didn't. Why? Let's have a look. Oh, I probably need to put some debug stuff in. Um, just for quickness, really. I'll just do a couple of console logs. Console.log last index.
item. Let's just do this. Yeah. Just make it a little bit easier to see what's going on. Now one difference when I'm doing it in, um, in here is it's way slower. Um, but We'll just have to live with that. Just because it's so big, I think. Um, it doesn't like it, so. Okay, page down. So it start, it's 15, 15. And then we do again, 30. Oh, I hope this actually, we might actually hit a, a different setup anyway, so. All right, so SPU. Right, so that's the one where it's gone wrong there, SPU. So, it focused 75, um, it recognized the last index, um, but it did not do the focus change. So let's see why. Let's see if we can do a bit more there. And let's see what that produces. Because I wonder, do I have to get the reference again? Because I did have problems with that last time. That's why the whole, yeah, I've got an item in the list there. Let's just do this. Ball. So, last index, is it visible? Okay. Start again. Uh, let's just clear out that. So, 15, 30, 45, Sixty, right. So now I'm going to do the SPU one, which is the last one that we can do. Is visible false? Hmm. Quick check here, to see if it is working, because we know that focused item is. So, focused item is visible. Does that work instead? Because I have a feeling that might come back false as well. If it does, then I'll try a dereference. Thirty, forty-five. Okay, so the next one is the one. It should be 
Oh, that worked. So, it's maybe a timing issue then. It might be that the key release is blocking it from scrolling. Here's a quick test. So at this point, so we're going to have here last index, but also let's have web focused item and we will catch that just here. So just before we change focused item, I'm just going to catch the last one. Now I know that that is going to scroll off and be invisible. So it should in theory, return um, should return false that, and in theory, that should return true, but it's not. But we'll see. Ah, uh, yeah, it's all wrong, isn't it? It's not updating. So it's returning that the prev is still visible after this um, scroll. Well, this is the thing. I think the scroll is happening after I've released the key. It's hard to tell. Okay. Uh, Not sure how to combat that. I'm not particularly sure whether I even care that much to, to combat. It was just like a little wrinkle that I thought, hmm, could be better, but...
to what I could do. Is I could preempt the focus to the end. I could do a calculation instead. How about um, so we're going through and we're picking last visible. So we get to this point and then we say, OK. What if we count? So. Well, we could just do an index check, actually. So we'll do. Do a first visible and a last visible. Uh, we're always picking out the last visible, but if first visible is less than zero, then we're going to set it to the index. So we've caught the first in the first visible. So that's set in that. Then down here. Okay, let's get rid of that. We don't need that anymore. So we can do a quick calculation. For the difference. So we always have If we've got more than a page's worth of items, you're always going to see a page's worth of items. If you've got under a page, I don't think it matters. I mean, it's just always going to go to the end. So I'll test that in a minute. But let's do, so page length is there. Oops. So the page length is going to be uh, simply last visible minus first visible on indexes. Um, we can therefore say If last visible have to be careful here because I've got a page length. Yeah, no, I could do that. If page length if last visible plus page length. is greater than elements length minus one. Let's just make sure we've got we don't really need to do that, but just for clarity. So we know that the last visible that we are going to scroll to is actually within a page length of the last item. 
then we'll just make focus item equal to elements length minus one. So we go to that. Otherwise, we just do the normal focused item. Let's just detail that. If last visible is less than age from last item, use last item. No. Focus last item. Okay. Get rid of some of this. Let's do this. Try that. So uh, we have just focused fifteen, thirty, forty five, sixty. Uh, SPU jump to the bottom. That's better. Yeah, it still doesn't know the last visible. So last is visible. But we've done the calculation and worked it out anyway. Just double check. It works on here as well. And then TPU should be selected, but it's not because we're going to go to the end. Cool. That's good. Okay. All right. Now we've just got to do the opposite to that for the page up. Uh, okay, I don't need to do any of that now, do I? That's gone. Let's just double check that I just done the right thing. Yes, okay. Cool. Right, and now... We've got, ah, uh, <laughs> so we don't have the calculation here because we are 
dropping out early. That's a bit of a pain. I'm going to have to carry on then. Okay, so we'll have to do Yeah, we'll have to do something similar. Uh, we'll take... So... Right, hmm, yeah, okay. So we've got the first visible. Right. We have to do the minus one here then. So if the item is visible, great. Set it. Now, if the item is visible and First visible is less than zero. Set it. Else, if actually keep that. No, get rid of that. If the item Yeah is visible. We will set last visible to it. I also want the last visible to be set. 
no matter what. So if it's not the first item, we just want to set the last visible. And then I think it's just an else we can break. So we come down through the list. We're doing... Oh no, we can't do that. Uh, else if... First visible is greater than or equal to zero. We are done. We found, got to the point where we found, right, something that is visible and it's the first one. So we set it. We've come through the loop again and go is visible, first visible is already set. So we drop into here and set that. Go around the loop a few more times doing this. Then we come to the point where it's a case of it's not visible, it's not visible. Um, and first visible has been set. Then we just break out because we're done. We found the last visible basically already. Okay. So in that scenario, we can. I guess we can take most of this and just chop it up a bit. So we have a page length, which is the last visible minus the first visible. So it's the last visible plus page length. No, okay, All right, we do need to do a different calculation here. Going up, so if the first visible minus the page length is less than or equal to zero. So there's less than a page, well, a page or less above it. Then the focused item is zero. We're just going to hit the top else we just set the focused item to the first visible. I think that works. Right. It's visible and we haven't set, set first and last. If we've already set the first visible, we've set the last, 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 last. Uh, 
uh, need the visible that we have first visible just break if it's not visible and we haven't matched on either of these we just keep going around the loop until we hit here okay yeah i think we're good and then we go to page length which is the last visible minus the first one we found if the first visible minus that in page length is less than or equal to zero so like in this case we've got six items if we're on seven it'll be seven minus six um which is uh, that's not going to work Oh no, who <laughs> well, actually? Because we're doing indexed. Yeah, so in, if we were on this last one here, which is index seven, sorry, six, but it's just off the screen. With that, actually, no, that wouldn't be right anyway. We'd have that one up there. That's fine. Okay, let's assume we were on index five on the way back at the top. So index four. And we go page length is six. So, yeah, I mean, it's obviously going to be negative there. What about here? We've got index 5 minus 6. It's going to be negative again. If we're on this one, which is index 6 minus 6. Hmm. That might not be what I want. I might need to make this less than. Okay, but I'll just give it a quick, quick try first. So, down, 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 all the way. Let's go all the way to the bottom. Right, so TPFU should go to the bottom. Teapot, spin new, snippet test five. Snap, Rusty, OSUS, Xmas, MVU, image U, escape test, DT calc, control, BSI, you right. Right, now we're coming into close. So this should still roll to the bottom. Now, right, so number five which is index four, this should hit the top. Yeah. Now, if I come down to here, Right, this will obviously do the do, but what we want is, well, I'll do a couple of quick tests. So if six is at the top, that should still hit the number one. Yep. But if seven's at the top, what's going to happen now? Well, I guess that's right. That's good. Six top. Eight. Yeah. 
Oh, I think we've done it. Oh, I've run out of time. Oops. <laughs> okay, I didn't realize. Um, all right. That's great. Okay, I will just... I've got no console stuff there. We are good to go. Um, improve page up down selection at top and bottom pages. Uh, oh. Smart. All right. And then I've got click focus and stuff to handle next. Um, and the actual enter key. So we're actually at the point now where I should be able to get where I should start implementing what happens when you select an item and action it and do the thing. And I do need to muck about with click focus on that as well. But until then, um, thanks for watching. Uh, until next time, take care.